Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's... And the Lord says to us to declare with boldness every time we wake up in the morning that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoicing is a choice. But may I also tell you, worrying is a choice. Which choice will you make? We have chosen to rejoice. Make rejoice your choice. Amen. It sets the tone for the rest of the day. And we give God praise that he has actually pulled us into his presence. Oh yes, we worship and he comes in, but there's something about him drawing us into his presence. We have had some awesome experiences with the Lord in recent services. I mean, it was just off the chain. And over the next two or three sessions, you will see little clips of it. In the midst of it, the Lord said to us, bring photos, bring uh, documents, bring whatever you need for him to do. Bring it and lay it at the altar. And oh, I tell you, he did not disappoint. Amen. And we also have been pursuing powerful word which has been uh, setting the tone for our prophetic apostolic mandate and it's called over the wall it's time to go over the wall and we're going to be touching that for the next few weeks as well things just keep happening one after the other good morning i'm apostle vivian duncan on behalf of my wife apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters are divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, welcoming you to this program. It's your date with destiny. We are heading directly to our message today, over the wall. Columbus, he was a thinker outside the box. Yes. And by the way, he was a Jew. Columbus was a Jew. I say he was a Jew a seed of Abraham. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm a, no, I, I'm, I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm not a Jew, but I'm a seed of Abraham. Therefore, if Columbus could think outside the box, all the geographers and all the map makers and all the politicians and so on, in his season, they, I mean, they lambasted him, they blazed him. When he said he don't believe, oh, also all the philosophers, he don't believe that the world is flat. You say, I believe if you go west, you could come back east. They say, you're mad. You're crazy. And that is why, in, in fact, if you know your history, Columbus was born in Genoa in Italy. I, I, I best do a, a history class, boy, and charge all you for forgetting all your history in Genoa, in Italy. But where did he get his funding? Spain. From Spain. Why? Because is it that he did not go to the king of Italy? Yes, he went to the king of Italy with his crazy idea. Crazy to them, but not to him. Tell your neighbor, when you think outside the box, when you think outside the box they will think you're crazy. They will think you're crazy. But you're really not crazy. Really not Unless you make them, make you believe that you're crazy. Because 
one who thinks outside the box is a visionary. Amen. Tell anybody that for me. All right, right. Let me flip the coin and make it more uh, 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 linguistically correct. A visionary is one who thinks outside the box. Come on, say it, say it, say it. And tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, a person just located you. Lovely. So, so Columbus said, Columbus said, the, you, you, you see all the talk they're talking here? It is possible that if you go west, you'll find a way to come back east and come right back to this port. They say you're crazy. I said so the king of, um, of Italy says, mm -mm, we cannot fund something like that. So he migrated to Spain. You see, you're going to have to find yourself among fellow outside the box thinkers. Yeah. Yesterday, people were fascinated. People who came from outside the box and came into the box only to realize we think outside the box. They were fascinated. I mean, even those from here were fascinated by the fact that a, a, a ministry run by a crazy <laughs> apostle could, I mean, launch an exhibition of, I think it was about 71 exhibitors, all from the church. Come on, give God a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. And listen, it's not that other people from outside didn't want to be part of it, but that we decided that this is a divine destiny worship center thing for this year. And we didn't even draw from the branches. We didn't have any boot from Pfizer bag, Chaguanas, Saint Grandi, or Tobago. We had a sister who goes to Chaguanas, but she is not yet a covenanter. And she was bold enough to say, Apostle, I know I'm not a covenanter here yet, but I've been going to the Chaguanas church. Uh, is it possible that I can be one of them? Of course, we, uh, we, we allowed her to come. She, and, and she may be here today. Down in the corner, she has some plans. You, you, you see, for those who didn't come yesterday, you're loving, caring, mushy, mushy. Uh, apostle, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Challenge the exhibitors to put their merchandise on display again so that who did not come yesterday could pass through. And if you notice, it's a thin corridor to go outside. You can't pass through again, you know. You're going through so. You must pass there and spend your money. And you from over, over the road, you didn't escape. Hello, come over. Come on down. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> we, we want you to be challenged to stop sitting at ease in Zion and saying, you know, I go, you know, I should, you know, you know, I go start a book, I go write a book. Look, sister, hall boy. Sister, hall stand. You have the book? Yeah, let me see one of them. Sister Hall has just written her second book. Hey. Hey. Come on, hey. Focus on it first, please. Like, come up big on the screen. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh. Because it's going on the shelves of Exosia. I, I want us to understand that this is a place that's challenging you to get out of the box. Sister Hall knows 
that age is a number. <laughs> Yesterday we gave a challenge as to how to determine age is or is not a number. I am so proud of her. Amen. Come on. Her third book, us, oh, I, prophesied, I just prophesied right there. Shabrondi. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, one of the things about writing is that once you start, you can stop. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there's hardly a one book author, unless he died as soon as he finished the book. This second book is Building Acts and Making Covenants by Ruth Hall. Sister Ruth tells us that the, 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 the first time she saw her writing in print, which was when she delivered her first month's contribution to our what? What's the name of the devotional? <laughs> and that was nearly... Let me see, we started 13 years ago writing and encouraging people to write by way of the articles first. And she brought some poems. And she was saying, Apostle, I was writing since I was about 16. And I never saw my writing in print. So for her, it was like a surreal moment. Amen. Just like me, when I wrote my first book, I couldn't use a computer. And I said, Susan, God bless her soul. Typed out, ambushed, which is now when destiny calls. When I saw the first paragraph on the computer, it was like my head just went somewhere. Like if I take a shot. No, I never take a shot. <laughs> but I take a shot. Ah, Jesus. So this, this morning, we want to launch this book. You hold it. Come in the center, in the middle. She, I won't tell you how old she is, but she's a seasoned saint. And she did not let her age become a number that stop her from writing. I know she wouldn't do the jump test. <laughs> you jump over the barrel to the third step test. But she has done the writing test. She has decided, I'm not going to say, I'm going to write. I feel to write. I have a book. I, no, she decided she will write. So she will never, ever suffer from a disease called kuda, wuda, shuda itis. Terrible. It's a terrible one. Because after time passes, when you should have done a thing, and you look to see you could have done it, but you didn't do it, you begin to beat yourself. When God is ready to call her to heaven, she would have left a record of her life. I'm sure what you have received thus far is saying to you, you cannot afford to just sit down in church. You cannot afford to just bask in the glory of God. You have to get up and go out. Get up and touch other people and let them know there has been a change on the inside. I'm going to anoint my hands and release that grace to you. Destiny anointing oil. We have been using this oil as a point of contact for years and the testimonies keep coming. So I'm going to anoint my hand and I want you by faith to receive the anointing of the soul winner, of the evangelist. Father, in your name, I prophesy to everyone viewing us know that there is an anointing on the inside, in the very bones. What is called the fire of soul winning, the fire of evangelism. And I wake it up right now. I declare as they go to the, the market today, as they go to the supermarket, as they walk along the road, get into a maxi, something is going to well up on the inside and they're going to say to the person next to them, do you know Christ as Savior? And Lord, when the answer comes, if that person does not know 
you are Savior. I declare there shall rise up in that one who serves you. The same anointing that was in the woman at the well and would witness for you what you have done in their lives. I release a boldness. I release a passion to see souls come to know you as Savior. Amen? God bless you. Good. Uh, we are actually in the month of November, which we have been saying for quite a while now, marks the end of our 40th anniversary celebrations. The 15th. That's Wednesday the 15th. Going right down to the 19th, we are having our 40th anniversary conference. Yes. And the theme is the birthing of a new generation. And do you know we are having our good friend from London, Dr. Shadrach Ofusuwari, originally from Ghana. Remember the first time I met him years ago? I prophesied to him that he will be coming to the Caribbean. And the Lord said to me, well, you bring him to the Caribbean. And not only that, just the weekend before I prophesied to him, somebody had prophesied to him in Ghana that he's going across the Atlantic to the West Indies. I mean, how does that happen? And from that time, he has made not just trips to Divine Destiny Worship Center. As he came to Divine Destiny Worship Center, God opened up the Caribbean and the Americas and South America to him. Isn't that awesome? That's how God does it. And he will be here with us. Take a little clip of him ministering some time ago. That's the fire he's coming here with in the name of Jesus. Wind of the Spirit. Today, I want to show you by God's grace, the concept of born again that really God intended for us to walk in. Because a lot of times we say we are born again, but the whole concept, we don't walk into that. You see, you are born again, number one, to be successful. And I have written here in my notes, don't be deceived. The driving force behind life is to be successful. Amen. Hallelujah is to be successful. The day the trumpet shall sound and you'll be brought before the judgment throne of God, the first question God is going to ask you, were you successful? Any assignment he gives you, he expects you to be successful in delivering that assignment. And interestingly, the reason why he says, Lord, Lord, and he says, I don't know you, is because you did not do what he called you to do. And a lot of times, we see people doing other things in the church and we get excited about it. But we haven't been called to do that. Are you understanding that? You can go to the mall and see all these trolleys writing about. And you feel that, let me just go and gather everything. You gather everything and you, you arrange it very nicely where it should be. Do you know that the manager will not give you any reward for that? Even though you've done a good job. Because that is not your duty. As a matter of fact, he doesn't have you on his payroll. And if you are seen doing that, possibly you could be arrested because somebody might think that you're trying to steal those uh, trolleys. And you have to understand that principle. That is what happens in the church. A lot of us are disjointed. And so we are not successful with our lives. But God spoke to Joshua. And he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate on it, what, day and night. Why? Because the word will bring you success. And you see that driving force must be success. I remember reading about Abraham Lincoln and during the Civil War in America. Said that our resolve is to succeed. Because the only testimony you have against your enemy is your success. When people say that, why do you go to church day by day? Why do you give tithe and offering? Why are you always serving the man of God? Why are you always your church singing? You are practicing going to all night meetings, doing this, doing that. You see, it silences them when they see success in your life. 
But when they see that, uh, yes, you can put your hands together. That's right. Hallelujah. When they see success in your life, if they don't see any success in your life, you're not attractive. Hallelujah. We give God the praise to have, for him to have hooked us up to an internationally known and world-renowned minister of the gospel. He will be here, Dr. Shadrach Ofusuwari. Look at the flyer right now. That's how it's going to be going. And during that week, on the 18th, that's a Saturday, we are having our disaster relief dinner, disaster relief dinner, at which we are expecting to raise a substantial amount of finances to send to our covenant partners out there in Tortola, Dominica, and in St. Thomas, where Hurricane Maria and Irma tore into their buildings in which they were housing the services. And we want to help them repair the building so that they can have service in a comfortable environment. Amen. We want you to call our numbers this week and call for your ticket. It's $500. Yes, that is going to go a long way in bringing relief to them. Amen. God bless you. And at Divine Destiny Worship Center, I mean, so many things are happening. We want to bring all of it to you. Over the last while, we have been experiencing such an awesome presence of God. And we want, again, for these next few weeks, to touch a little on all of it, what has been happening. Just receive right now a little touch of what the Lord has been doing with us. In, in that service, he said, bring all the, uh, uh, your deeds and your, your photos of uh, relatives that you want to get saved and s situations that have not been working out later at the altar. Let it soak in the glory. What's to come God? drop those photos and those, those uh, envelopes at the altar. Come, 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 just come. Drop them right here. There's an awesome anointing right here. Rebekete Yabasha. Rokomosate. Rebekete Yanamashana. Hallelujah. By faith, by faith, we declare healing. By faith, salvation. By faith, breakthrough. By faith, the end to that court case. By faith, the end to that legal problem. By faith, there shall be a finishing of that project. By faith, that house will be finished built. By faith, you'll finish pay that loan. By faith, you will get the funding you need. By faith, put it right here. And if you don't have it, just write it out and put it right here before the service is over. Because we are, it's God that said to do it. This wasn't our own thinking. He said do it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. I'm feeling a breakthrough. Tell anybody. I feel. Ah, <laughs> your massacre. A sense of a serious breakthrough like you never had it before. We give God the praise because uh, He keeps His word. And we are not ashamed to say, if you want to have such an experience, why not show up with us? Uh, at the next service. Come to Divine Destiny Worship Center this Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and I guarantee you, you will get caught up in the glory. Uh, listen to me. People say that there's no rapture. Well, I'm telling you, we've been raptured into God's glory. Amen. And you know, we have our radio programs. Radio programs, yes, three of them every week. We are on a Monday night on 98.1 with It's Your Date with Destiny. On a Tuesday night on 107.1 The Word, we are there with Living the More Abundant Life at 9.30 p.m. And on a Friday, we have Ask Pastor Gemma 
back on 98.1 FM at 3 p.m. Don't miss it. Amen. So we look forward to see you at our conference. But even before that, we look forward to see you in one of our services. Amen. Sunday morning at 9, Friday evening at 7. This year marks our 40th anniversary of ministry. We have touched lives by the thousands, by the hundreds of thousands. And we have been celebrating. And we're coming to the final week of our celebrations. November 15th. That's Wednesday, November 15th, right down to Sunday. Right down to Sunday, November 19th, we are having our conference, the birthing of a new generation. Yes, 40 years, end of a generation. Now, the 41st year, a new generation is coming up. Why not be part of it? We want to see you at the conference that's wednesday the 15th thursday 16th friday the 17th sunday the 19th what would we be having on this on the saturday what would we be having on the saturday it's our 40th uh, anniversary dinner but it's now dubbed the 40th anniversary disaster Relief Benefit Dinner. It's going to cost you just $500. But it's not just $500. It is money that will go towards the rebuilding effort for our friends and covenant partners in Totola and in Dominica. In fact, we also have our covenant partners in Thomas. We want to make sure we have a space for worship. So come on down to the conference. Birthing a new generation. 15th to the 19th of November. Wednesday to Sunday. Come on down to our 40th anniversary dinner. And it will be a disaster relief benefit for our partners. God bless you as you come to celebrate with us and be a blessing to our partners. Amen. Next right. time on Divine Destiny Worship Center's program, this program, it's your date with destiny. Here, here. this picture is doing to you. I want one, one sentence, not a long one, just one thing. This wall is saying to me, boom. This wall is saying to me, boom. So this is what we have here? What do we have here? A wall. What do we have here? A wall. A wall, a wall is saying to me, break shoes. Oui, it is. Breakthroughs, right? Breakthrough. Because it's a journey here. Good morning. Uh -huh. The wall is saying to me, go over. Go over. Mm -hmm. The wall is saying to me, strength. Strength. Uh -huh. The wall is saying to me, I can do all things. I can do all things. Wow. Right, over on this the side. The wall is saying to me, keep on climbing. Jesus, so yeah. keep on climbing. Wait. Yeah. So until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center declaring to you, you began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You are a God idea because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. Continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.